and it says we're live. Good morning, everybody. My name is Shay. This is the Thursday morning live stream. Um, I am enjoying a bright and sunny morning. The world is turning green outside, which is making me very happy. And I have a little bit of work to do today. I am not sure um, what I want to accomplish today, so we need to come up with it right away. Um, and otherwise, I am content in all things, which is a lovely state of being. So yeah, there's my Stephanie. Good morning, darling. How are you? What's today? Today is May 28th. Oh my goodness, you guys. I'm good. Morning has been good so far. I'm waking up far earlier with Dave home now. And that means I'm getting a lot done prior to the stream starting in the morning. And by a lot done, I mean we're playing a lot of Heroes of Might and Magic 3, which is one of the best games that's ever been made, in my opinion. Um, so, yeah. I was thinking we could do some world building today. Um, I want to look at two organizations that I have going on in Gatto. And if we don't get any love... Um, on that and don't get any progress, then what I want to do is just switch over to working on my April Patreon map because it is the 28th and I have not started that yet. Um, so I should really, really get cracking on that. Uh, hopefully not at five. No, <laughs> Dave is up at five. I am still comfortably in bed until like seven most mornings. Uh, so today I was up earlier than that. Um, but yeah, it was good. Uh, it's really different having a couple of hours to do stuff before the stream because for quite a while while Dave was deployed, I was waking up like an hour before the stream would start. So it was just long enough to have my coffee and then get to my desk. So that was all right. So yeah, Ceridian Coil is uh, a name of an eagle organization that I have in my setting. Um, they're chaotic evil. Um, well, maybe not necessarily chaotic. Hey, Patrick, how are you, darling? And there's my Laura. Good morning. And to everybody else who's lurking and not popping up on the chat, hi, good morning. I can see that there are six of us, so I'm not sure who else is here. Oh, it's Dennis. Hello, Dennis. Um, husband is military, uh, Canadian forces. Yes. Um, he just got back from a year long deployment overseas. So it's really exciting to have him back. And then there's a Myrna. Oh my goodness. Hi Myrna. Um, I do show, do prefer a physical book, Dennis. Um, I have a world anvil profile that I want to start using. Um, but I haven't really invested the time or energy to it. Instead I have, notebook after notebook after notebook of notes and drawings and various other things that kind of go into this process for me. Um, some of the drawings are good. Some of them are terrible. Um, just kind of depends what's going on. Um, but yeah, I, I tend to be very analog in my method. So Congratulations on just getting back, Dennis. That's awesome. Happy birthday to the kid, Laura. I can't believe it. Oh my God, really? He's not allowed to keep getting older, man. This is messing with my head. So. <laughs> well, I'm glad that you're here, Dennis. That's awesome. Um, I do draw still. I have a map that I need to get done for my patrons on Patreon this month still, but I kind of am feeling the world building this morning after a game that I played with a friend of mine last night. How is he 17, Laura? That's not okay. Oh my God. Feeling old, feeling old. Um, but yeah. Yeah. It's exciting to see all the people this morning. Hi, friends. <laughs> 
So yeah, let's talk Ceridian Coil. Uh, they are an evil organization. Uh, they are worshipers of Bane. Who is a, a god of war and conquest in D and D? I am using him. I have not reskinned him to a terrible extent because I think he's pretty fine and balanced as he is. Um, these guys want to start a war. In Gatto to destabilize. Yeah, you're right completely, Patrick. So we'll say that they're lawful. I think their individual agents might be chaotic, but I think you're right. The organization itself is lawful. So they want to start a war to destabilize the monarchy. I think they have ties to Caius. But I think they might also, or not, like, that's a question mark for me. I'm willing to leave that open to discussion. Caius is kind of like a well-represented threat in this area. I don't think it needs to be like a multi-pronged threat. They're already kind of doing their thing. Um, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I need to know what they're doing in the city of Avalis. Like, not like, you know, why they're there. I know why they're there. But like, what kind of schemes do they have going on that might be destabilizing the monarchy? That's kind of what I want to work on right now. Um, I think they should be planning a couple of assassinations. Um, there was already one that was attempted poorly. Um, I think there should be another few that try to happen and a few that actually are successful. Um, so let's put that down. Assassinations. Um, I don't see them as like trying to launch a fiscal attack or anything like that. I feel like their violence is more Bane's profile. So that makes sense to me. Maybe some riots? Riots could be fun. But why would they be rioting? Question mark. It's a good question. Whispered lies? Turn opinions? Okay, I like that. Whisper campaign. What kind of whispers? Uh, rumors that the princess is a warlock. Why not? To a demonic patron. Rumors that the Fregandar are abducting people, which has just enough truth in it to be a problem for the Fregandar. There's a John. Hello, darling. How are you? Dennis, you pulled one of your messages away. Why did you do that, my dear? Not that you're not allowed, I'm just curious. You're allowed to say you just got back. I didn't ask you where you got back from. I should have done that, my apologies. How you doing, John? What are you up to today, driving home? Cool. Oh yeah, I keep forgetting it's so much later in the day where you are. Awesome that you came to hang out on your drive. Doing some world building today, um, trying to come up with some schemes that my evil organization can be carrying out in the city. Um, 
so that I have it going on. Oh, that makes sense, Dennis, for sure. Okay, cool. Just wanted to make sure like my neglect in asking hadn't offended you or something. I try to be conscious of that kind of thing. Especially with service members. Hey, Patrick, we talk about military stuff all the time. <laughs> All right. Rumors that the Bragandar are abducting people. How about a nonsensical rumor? Are they known to be evil? Uh, they're an underground movement, but those who know of them know them to be evil. Yes, that is correct. Um, it is an organization associated with the god Bane, who is uh, War and Conquest. And the organization we're going to say is Lawful Evil. They are very organized. Um, and they want to start a war in Gatto to destabilize the monarchy so that they can take over. Um, the god Bane, according to D&D &D lore, um, as worship accepts the torture of sentient beings. And so this is an element that I have just played up recently in the game that I ran last night, um, where the people are using a lighthouse that previously Charles's character, Kaiden, had uh, cleared out and defeated one of the cultists at. And his patron, because he's a warlock, suggested that he return to that spot and that it's being used again. And when he said, why would you do that? The spot's been compromised. Like, it doesn't make sense to go back. Um, his patron said, if you're somebody who uses murder as a form of worship, then a loss of life is not a bad thing, necessarily. Um, so he was like, oh, yeah, I guess that's true. So he's going to go back and check it out again. Uh, and I've got to figure out what's all there for him to find this second time around. They have aspirations of inserting a group member, a do doppelganger, but the doppelganger has become schizophrenic after a wizard opened his mind to every past impersonation at once. Oh. Okay. So they want to insert a group member to where? To, like, the inner circle of advisors of the monarchy? To the noble houses? To the minor houses? Let's ask that first, because that kind of tells us what kind of doppelganger situation we're dealing with. Yes, all. <laughs> they just want to go everywhere, do all the things. Okay, so let's say... Um, Start with a minor house. Okay. Okay, so we had agreed on a previous stream that there was a cleric of Bane who was blackmailing uh, Vangelis Herovis, who was the head of Sapphire House, who's one of the major noble houses. Um... But because we have already worked in this appointment, uh, this confluence between them and Sapphire House, why don't we go with Sapphire House? Um, that they're blackmailing him and trying to get themselves into a position to take over as him. Because that's nice and tidy. Um, Sapphire House. Vangelis. Vangeli. Herovis. Um, when the blackmail doesn't work because Kaiden rescued the sacrifices, which we had talked about uh, in a previous stream, the cultists move on to outright impersonation of Herovis. Replace with shapeshifter.
well known by the people. Yeah, absolutely, John. I think you're completely correct. Um, and so we had agreed that Vangeli Horovis was a naval advisor to the king. Let me just confirm that. It's going to make Patrick crazy that I'm having to flip through this book and not have a more organized system. <laughs> My apologies, darling. Sapphire House, Vangeli Horovis, naval advisor to the king. He's a human. Uh, and there were rumors that he was involved in human trafficking. Those rumors have been proven wrong, as we had agreed on a previous uh, stream, that he was he was picking people up and holding them prisoner, but he was doing it because he was being blackmailed to provide sacrifices to a cultist of Bane, otherwise the cultist was going to kill his family. Um, so... Yeah, those uh, people that were held aside as sacrifices have been rescued. Caden uh, did that two games ago, not last night, but the previous session. And uh, it was an opportunity that he couldn't pass up. They have been removed from that situation. But that has now frustrated the clerics of Bane and put Horovis in danger because he wasn't able to basically pay off the situation that he thought he had resolved. So... Recipe cards color-coded for his note organizing. I did that with artifacts um, back in the day for this kind of thing. So, Laura, I totally get that. That makes sense. Um, Dennis, I do not stream the games as well. Um, my sessions have only two players currently, uh, and both of them are pretty gun-shy about that kind of thing. Um, I can't blame them for that. Um, so, and I think like the level of game that I play might not be interesting to a lot of people because it's really, really heavy role playing. Uh, there's not as much combat as there could be, um, which tends to be more interesting for people out of the streams that I've watched. Um, so I just don't know that the interest would be there. What I have considered starting to do is I write a summary, uh, for every session uh, so that we can recap at the beginning of each session what happened in the previous session. And Dana, who is somebody who uh, is a friend of mine who periodically shows up in the chat on the stream, has asked me to start publishing those on my blog so that she can keep up on what's going on um, without having to like be able to watch the sessions. So three boxes, people, places, and things. Oh, that sounds awesome. Uh, that'd be a really good system. Oh, on that note of organization, I finally had to split my binders in two. Um, so I've got one for Halcyon and I've got one for Gatto. So this is the new Gatto binder. Show off my fabulous old school uh, TSR dividers from the 80s because they are sexy as hell. Uh, these are Dave's. So yeah, I'm in love with having like really nerdy dividers in this book. But yeah, two binders now, so that might make Patrick happier than this nonsense in my notebook. <laughs> All right. I'm not really going to stay on topic super well today, you guys, apparently. What do we know about that? Um, so we've got a doppelganger situation coming into Sapphire House. All right. That is good to know. Um... Actually, that kind of works well because there was recently an assassination attempt at a Sapphire House gala. Which we can treat as a screen for the replacement of Herovis. There's a Joe. Hello, darling. How are you? Shiny object syndrome, best waste of time in gaming group. <laughs> That's fair. Um, I do a lot of shiny objects, but my shiny objects tend to be like miniatures that I've painted or terrain that I've made, that kind of thing. Um, I do really like having my uh, 
stuff fairly organized. Like I do have a system of organization in this book, um, but I have to flip back and forth for it. So that's kind of a thing. All right. So the other group that I wanted to work on a little bit today, because I think that Sakata is pretty much tapped out for Ceridian Coil for the minute, uh, is the Lamp and Flame, which is what they're being called right now, but I need a better name for them. So that's in order of business. Proper name, question mark. Um, and I need to know what their objectives are. For the city. Um. <laughs> you do so many projects too, Patrick. You're a real Renaissance man that way. I don't think they have to pretend though. You're always doing something very interesting. I know that my players are generally pretty interested in what's going on with what I'm working on too, because it all tends to relate back to game. If I'm drawing maps for them or I'm making artifacts for them or whatever it is. So a lot of that creative process feeds back into game right now, which is okay. I don't mind that at all. I do have a map that I need to get started though. I'm slightly anxious about that. All right, so objectives for Gatto. Um, I think they want to see the monarchy preserved. I think they want to see the maintenance of the status quo. in terms of population, financial health, strength of army, slash Navy, and general political independence. I think they want to see a lessening of the power of the nobility. Because they inherit by birthright. in favor of more of a meritocracy. And then that means the power centers in the city can kind of shift up a little bit towards those who know what they're doing or have demonstrated proficiency as opposed to just those who have the money or the title that have been born to it. Um... They also want to see a decrease in the gang wars. Too many casualties, too much disruption. Okay. We need a name. 
Can I read what I have? Yeah, I'll, I'll go from the beginning uh, for the Ceridian Coil first. Uh, lawful evil, worshiper of banes. Uh, they are the domain of war and conquest. They want to start a war in Gatto to destabilize the monarchy. Um, I'm not sure if they have ties to the Kyan Empire or there's some other faction. I'm leaning towards some other faction right now. Uh, plans for them on the radar are assassinations, possibly riots. And Laura suggested a whisper campaign. Uh, some of the rumors that they might be passing around is that the princess is a warlock to a demonic patron. That would have impacts among the Nai. Um, rumors that the Bregandar are abducting people. That would have impacts for the Bregandar. And that they want to insert a doppelganger into a major house. We've decided that the major house would be Sapphire House and that the target would be Vangeli Horovis. Um, because the blackmail situation that Vangeli was recently in hasn't worked out. Uh, so the cultists are going to move on to outright impersonation of Horovis. Um, and then for the Lamp and Flame, their objectives in the city so far are to see the monarchy preserved, to see the maintenance of the status quo in terms of population, financial health, strength of the army and navy, and its political independence from other nations, and the lessening of the power of the nobility in favor of a meritocracy, a, also a decrease in the gang wars and Havalas because there are too many casualties and too much disruption. Does that help? I always get the feeling you're taking notes as we go along, Patrick. Are you taking notes as we go along? I have no complaints if you are. I'm just curious. Makes very much sense that other people would be using this too if they can because we're all doing the work together. Nothing wrong with that. Mentally. That is totally fair. Forgot to light my candle, you guys, today. There we go. All right. We need a name. Let me have a look here. So I've been using Santorini Greece as the template for uh, the city of Havalis and Gatto. So I've been using a lot of Greek language for names and for uh, of organizations and individuals. Uh, enter text. Um, Can the person be female just to mix it up? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You used to DM for the guy that created cantrip candles. I'm burning a cantrip candle right now, Dennis. This is absolutely a cantrip candle. It is adventurer's bounty, as a matter of fact. Um, that is awesome. They were uh, super... They're an expensive proposition because of shipping to Canada, but worth it. Too awesome. Um, yeah, it is a small world, right? <laughs> Absolutely. So I take it you're in the States then, Dennis? Because isn't cantrip candles in like California, I want to say? I might be wrong. It's been a while since I've looked. Uh, so the representatives for the Lamp of Flame of this point, there are three that Kaiden has met. There's Lyra, who's a cab driver. There's Elise, and he has no idea what she does for a living, but she has a dog. And then there is Demetrios, who's with the Kingfishers. Yeah, you're almost Canadian. Keep coming farther north, we'll give you health care. So we have two women and a guy for the lamp and flame so far. 
go to the casino. Yeah, absolutely. That's a thing in Canada for sure. Sorry, guys, distracted. They appear to be dropping off a giant waste bin in front of my house, which is going to cause me problems because my car parks there. All right, I'm confused. They're doing renovations to the PMQs on either side of us. So that's been creating all kinds of fun lately. All right, so I think the name for these guys is going to be... I'm going to pronounce this terribly wrong because I speak no Greek. Lampai Floga. I will. Hey, I can hear that being spoken. Just a second. Let's do that. Lampai Floga. Nice. Thank you, Google. And that means the shining flame. We will go with that. How long has, for Swedish? Yeah, absolutely. It's a super useful feature, 100%. How long has the Lampe Floga been in existence in Gatto? I feel like it's been a long time. The feature as a friend. No wonder you're so eager for Thursdays, Patrick. I'm sorry, I should not mock that at all. I wasn't mocking it, but truthfully, I'm glad that you come and hang out with me every Thursday. I think let's roll some percentage dice with an extra d10 to determine hundreds of years. Do, do, do. One more d10. Why is it when you look in your dice bag, you can never find the dice that you want instantly? The d8. There's another d10. Yeah, how long has the group been in existence? Let's have a roll. Perhaps it's older. Oh, okay. I like that. Older than Gatto. So where does it come from? Sentient dice bags. Yes. So it's 882 years old. So it's presence in Gatto, in Gatto, existed in another nation or nations um, before coming to Gatto. Who has the desire to keep Gatto sovereign? Relatively new in Gatto since they haven't infiltrated the hierarchy yet. Um, this is the lamp and flame, though. They aren't necessarily geared towards infiltrating the hierarchy. The Ceridian coil is. I'm just going to grab my mapping atlas, you guys. I need it for a second. Okay. Oh, is this the back? This is the back. All right. 
right. See if I can show you guys what I got here. Sorry, I keep hitting the camera. I don't mean to. <laughs> yeah, I do. Get back in the sleeve. There we go. This is the one I want. So, we have Gatto, we have Coruscant. I need colored pens. I need to plot Sheree in here. And Shrey is farther away. Um, I might need a second area of my polyhedral map developed. Oh, I'm kind of rabbit holing. I don't know what I need to do in order to be organized today, you guys. It's a problem. Uh, 
Who has the desire to keep Gatto sovereign? That is a good question. Let's say it is the nation of Mason. Mason. Which is an Arabic name. I just like the sound of it. There was no different reason. You know what? Let's Google it and see what it means. Do, do, do. A beautiful face, a beautiful face and body. No, not generally. We had a we had an NPC that we came up with who was very, very, very old. And had been in the area for a very long time. Lavis Aurelius. That's what it was. Let's say that Lavis is connected to the lamp and flame. Um, Spelling that wrong. Lavius Aurelius. He established the organization in 
in Gatto to support the monarchy. In an unofficial capacity, to handle the things his official capacity couldn't do. I haven't heard that joke, Patrick, no. Am I building the world around a focal point right now or is it more what comes to mind? Um, kind of a mix of both. So the story is already in progress and I know the general thrust of what's going on for this particular game. The world that this is set in has multiple games going on in it right now. So I'm trying to link, like the game that we're talking about right now is here in this green. Um, but there's also a game going on up here in the yellow, and then there's a game going on offside over here somewhere that is gradually bringing them towards the coast. Um, so the game that's in green is the Gatto game, and it's focusing on uh, trying to maintain the sovereignty of a small island nation uh, that is constantly being besieged by other naval powers trying to take it over. And so it's a very politics heavy game, uh, lots of subterfuge, lots of secret societies and putting pieces together like that. Most of it is taking place in one city state, which is Havalis and Gatto. Um, and so I'm just trying in this moment to flesh out two of the organizations that have come up that I don't have a ton of detail for. Um, so this is kind of just the general brainstorming of whatever comes to mind. And then if I like it, great. If I don't, I'll pare it down later. Um, and just kind of going from there. So I'm totally open to suggestions. I'm completely, completely just willing to like toss out anything right now and see if it sticks. If it doesn't stick, if we riff off of each other, it's all good. Perhaps the organization's original goals have long since been hijacked. So what were the original goals? Hmm. Have you considered listing potential loose ends and hooks in the back of the journal and you can cross them off as you link them? I have not considered that, but that is a brilliant idea. That is a brilliant idea. What do I have in the back of the journal? I have the random encounter list of doom that I've been working on for when they go into the summer court in the Halcyon game. And then I have another random encounter sheet, some artifacts. Those pages can actually come out now because we have them somewhere else and a little bit of information on the uh, advent calendar that I made Lisa for Christmas. I did 24 days of world building for her and each day there was a paragraph of something related to the gaming world that she got to open up and each one was an individual little scroll. And um, Yeah. All right, we got some comments going on. Have you ever considered, yeah, we did that one. Uh, where did Acelius spend his youth and what was his drive back then? Um, he spent it in the area. He, I don't know what he did when he was younger. He's been a advisor to the crown for the last five generations, um, but he's still pretty old comparatively speaking. So I'm not sure what he did as a youth. Um, one avenue that might make sense is for the nation to be similar to Venice in the sense that it is small and autonomous. Yes, that is true. Uh, Gatto has been uh, autonomous and small for a very long time. Uh, they are a pretty massive trade port. 
Um, people come from forever around because they offer a very free trade and an elegant, bizarre thing. Um, yeah, and laws that may not be okay where they currently live. Maybe the lamp people have a stake in the merchant quarter and having this place free benefits them there. Okay, that's really good. So... Lampe. Floga has a stake in the merchant quarter. Originally came to Gatto to establish trade in an environment that was less restrictive of goods and services then what did we name it? Mason. Mason. Um, let's say Mason is a highly regulated majocracy similar to Aramalias in the Obsidian Shadow. Books by Lackey and Mallory. That will help me in shorthand. Not that I think we're dealing with May soon anytime soon, but that will work. All right. Let's see merchant and entertainment. Because that's a reasonable place to punk a bunch of people who are information gatherers and spies. That works for me. So they've been in Gatto for 882 years. Um... Did the organization, the organization would have had to come to Aurelius then, because Aurelius was already here. So who brought it to Gatto? Uh, give me a name. We're dealing with an Arabic name. Let's deal with a guy as the contact point. Um... Rashan. Um, Salwa. Human from Maysoon. Oh, I like Asfor. Let's do Russian as for, as for. Human from Maysoon was the original Lampe Loga founder in Havalis. Uh, made contact 
with Aurelius when Aurelius was young. Were they friends? Were they lovers? Were they enemies? Were they rivals? And how did they start working together? Uh, this is a secret group and not an overt group. This is another one of the secret societies. Okay, I like that, that works. Okay, that works too, Stephanie. All right, so they were business partners. That established. trade company and built the group to deal with covert operations. The group back in May soon had suffered a major setback disassembly. Hundreds of years ago, maybe they their uh, setback was that they they were disbanded basically when the majocracy came into power. Um, Aurelius, and as for, were secretly lovers to follow Stephanie's advance, um, stayed discreet because against Uh, Mason, religious doctrines, because biases are real, and as much as I hate them, they are interesting fodder in a fantasy world. Uh, I like the idea of following the theme as if the stories of the Knights Templar were all true. I'm not sure which group may save it for later. Okay, I like that too. Um, but I think you're right. Let's save it for another group. Uh, no, this happened quite some time in the past, Steph. And it's two guys, so unless we have a surrogate situation going on, which we could, surrogacy is absolutely an option. Um, did they have a family? That's a really good question.
So if these guys come out of an area where a majorocracy came into power, are they anti-magic? Oh, that's all good. No stress. Are they anti-wizard specifically? Okay, so they had a family. Okay. Uh, Lampe, Floga is anti magic. I was actually thinking anti arcane magic, um, like wizardry specifically, and that they were pro wild magic. Um, because the wild magic you can't really control. Like if a patron takes an interest in you or a, a god takes an interest in you, that's outside of your sphere of influence. But arcane magic like wizardry is absolutely something that you have to buy into and train hardcore for. Does that make sense or am I kind of out to lunch on this? Um, if the whole deal is people being equal, it may make sense. Yeah, for sure. But I don't think that they want to see like wizards put to the sword necessarily. But maybe they want to see regulation on magic. Um, want all people to be equal or at least evaluated on their merit um how can you regulate magic that is a damn good question joe and i have no idea um want a regulation checks system on wizards to keep the playing field level or they want wizardry to serve the people the common people. So things like mage lights, mending cantrips, and service in the army navy. If you've got to have the power, you need to spend it on behalf of the city. Um, depending on the system, you could use detect magic wards and impose sanctions on people who do use it, or you control who has access to edu magic education regarding. Yeah, okay. Uh, so just a second, uh, they are tolerant of magic, uh, that is the result of deity or patron interaction. because that is outside 
the scope of individual control. Um, so we have a governing body for magic in Gatto. Okay. Um, Uh, monitors. Maybe it's not a governing body. Maybe it's a judicial branch. Concerning magic. Because we've already established that there's a pretty extensive system of courts in Havalis. Um... It's a judicial branch concerning magic. So magic crimes infractions are dealt with by other mages, appointed mages, not just anybody. because normal people cuz well like they just wouldn't be able to offer a punishment Um, if you really want to get lost in bureaucracy, you could license spells and services, have an entire system of getting qualifications. Imagine having to get your annual certificates re-upped or something equally tedious. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Um, perhaps demonstration of unknown spells are reviewed by the body. What type of punishments and laws do they have for other things? Time in the pillory or face branding. Uh, there is a coliseum, a gladiatorial arena, um, that is currently a big part of the crime and punishment system. Um, so maybe there's like a mage level gladiatorial ring where you're allowed to use magic to defend yourself, but the things that you're fighting are equally more monstrous. Um, and maybe that's part of how they handle like monster regulation on the island is that when monsters move in or show up or whatever, they're captured and held um, against use in the arena. Although I imagine, like, over time, they'd get hunted out because an island nation is an island nation, right? Maybe there is the power to strip magic out of people. That if you have too many infractions, you can be blocked. I'm thinking of uh, Robert Jordan's Wheel of Time. Um, what is it called within the Aes Sedai? Stilling. Um, you can be stilled. You can have your power leave you or have it ruined and then no longer be able to access the source of the magic. Survival in the arena demonstrates the intercedence of a deity, and so they are freed. Yeah, I think something like that is perfectly logical, um, at least for the context of what we're looking at. Sort of witch trial, a tattoo ceiling spell. Yeah, okay, so I like that. Okay, so some more notes here. Um, punishment is... Special magic allowed gladiatorial 
combat uh, method of monster regulation for the island use of tattoos to bind and strip magic if crimes warrant it winning in the arena implicates the hand of fate the attention of gods and is a sign to go free think which trial okay I have something similar in my world. Magic is channeled through the world and there is a nation that developed an uptake inhibitor to block it. Oh, that's fascinating, Dennis. So there's no mages in that nation at all? Yeah, how do you handle the um, distribution of that? Is it like a machine that affects a giant area? Is it a pill that affects the individual? Hmm. That's really cool. A pill called Arcanum, which literally prevents a creature from being able to absorb magical energy from the planet. The side effects are numerous, and once you have been exposed to the drug, withdrawing can be deadly. Oh, wow. So that's a huge imposition on any players or NPCs that have been exposed. Is there a... They control the pot by controlling the supply. Okay. So people want to take it so that they prevent the side effects of the withdrawing. That's a really, like, fun way to handle that. Yeah. What age do they start pushing it at? Does it happen like as a child and you just grow up as part of that being normal? Do they wait for you to show evidence of majory at like puberty or something before you start being given it? Are they just dosing the entire population as a safe like cure-all? Like does the entire population have the potential for mage gift? They wait for you to show signs. That makes sense because then you're not like necessarily wasting a resource on people that don't necessarily need it. That's definitely one guarantee, like one way to guarantee med compliance. By the way, if you don't take this, you might die. Ta-da! Well, of course, because as long as you're going to work for the government in the position of power, whatever is in position of power, then you're useful. Yeah. Or numb it. Yep, yep, yep. 
I like equal opportunity too, Joe. I think it's part of the reason I've been so partial to Wizards for a long time. The anti-magic policies have created a humanitarian crisis in many of the larger cities. Underground organizations train their cells in magic. Citizens who cannot afford their Arcanum regiments turn to crime or homebrew supplements. And government forces consistently overreact to subtle wild magic flares with extreme violence. Oh, wow. That sounds fabulous. It's giving me a little bit of Repo the Genetic Opera vibe, <laughs> like just from the description that you've given us. Like, very regulated, lots of consequences for not falling in line. Definitely. Yeah. All you can think of is Ducky from The Land Before Time. I love you, Stephanie. <laughs> uh, Repo the Genetic Opera is a movie. Uh, it stars Anthony Stewart Head, uh, the opera singer Sarah Brightman. Um, Anthony Stewart Head, of course, was Giles from Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Uh, Paris Hilton was in it and surprisingly rocked the role she was given. It surprised the hell out of me. I never thought I'd say those words all in one sentence, but I'm saying them. Um, it's really, really a fascinating show. It is an opera. It is a musical. Um, but the music absolutely adds to it. It's not a comedy. Uh, it can be really gory in moments. Um, kind of post-apocalyptic-ish uh, vibes to it. Uh, really, really interesting. It's called Repo, the genetic opera, Patrick. And uh, it's really fascinating. My understanding is there's two versions out there. I'm speaking about the one with Anthony Stewart Head playing the Repo Man. Um, that's the one that I think is fabulous. So definitely worth checking out. Um, fun fact, Sarah Brightman, the opera singer who plays Blind Mag in Repo, uh, was the singer that Andrew Lloyd Webber wrote The Phantom of the Opera for. Uh, they were dating at the time and he wanted to showcase her voice. <laughs> so I just think that's so cool. Uh, it's not on Netflix. I had a hard time tracking it down, actually. Uh, it's a bit of a cult classic. When was it made? Hang on. Let me find a link for you guys and I'll post it in the comments. <laughs> There's the IMDB for it. Says it's available on Amazon if you have Amazon to work with. It's really like a fascinating film. I enjoyed it so much. And I'm not normally someone who's like really mega into uh, like horror stuff in any capacity. And this was just really worth watching. Um, very, very fascinating. Oh, you're welcome. No problem. All right. We got about another 10 more minutes, you guys. Is there any more world building that I have to tackle before I have to quit? Um, well, let's just review this and see if it takes us in any other directions. You've seen it on one of the movie channels you have through Telus. Okay, that's good to know. All right. So let's read over the stuff for the lamp and flame and see if it takes us in any other directions. So their objectives are to see the monarchy preserved. I think that they, that is to keep the economy, economy stable. 
the maintenance of the status quo in terms of population, financial health, strength of the army and navy, and political independence, the lessening of the power of the nobility due to inheritance or birthright power in favor of a meritocracy, and a decrease in the gang wars in Havalis because it's creating too many casualties and too much disruption. Uh, their name means the Shining Flame. They have been in Gatto for 882 years. They existed in other nations before coming to Gatto, uh, particularly the nation of Maysun. Uh, Lavius Aurelius, who's the head of Carnelian House, is the head of the Lampi Floga, was established in Gatto to support the monarchy in an unofficial capacity to handle the things his official capacity couldn't do. That is not what we have agreed on now. So let's just cross that out. Uh, is current head. Um, and then we're going to draw an arrow to here. Um, has a stake in the entertainment and merchant quarter, originally came to Gatto to establish trade in an environment that was less restrictive of goods and services than Maysun. Maysun is a highly regulated majocracy, similar to Amaraleith in the Obsidian Shadow Books by Mercedes Lackey and James Mallory. Rashan Asfur is a human from Maysun who was the original Lampe Floga founder in Havalis. Uh, made contact with Aurelius when Aurelius was young. They started out as business partners that established a trade company and built the group to deal with cohort operations. The group back in Maysun had suffered a major setback and disassembly hundreds of years ago when the majocracy came into power there. Aurelius and Asfur were secretly lovers, stayed discreet because it was against Maysun's religious indoctrinations, had a family, and were stable. until as for died of old age. Because Aurelius is an old, old person. Um, the Lampe Floga is anti-magic. They want all people to be equal or at least evaluated on their merit. They want regulation and checks and system of wizards to keep the playing field level or they want wizardry to serve the common people, as in mage lights, mending cantrips, and service in the army or navy. They are tolerant of magic that is the result of deity or patron interaction, because that is outside the scope of individual control. In Gatto, there is a judicial branch concerning magic, so magic crimes and infractions are dealt with by other appointed mages, because normal people don't understand it intuitively and can't control it. Punishment is special magic allowed gladiatorial combat, method of monster regulation for the island. There is the use of tattoo sealing spells to bind or strip magic if crimes warrant it. This should have another T in it. And in winning in the arena implies the hand of fate or the attention of gods and is a sign that the person goes free. This has all of the vibes of a witch trial. So what do you think? Is there anything else that we need to kind of spin on this? Who did they recruit? Who do they recruit and why do they recruit them? They look for individuals with cunning or skills the group has a deficit of um, circumspect and discreet our priorities um Will not accept wizards. Or clerics. Uh, they don't want
Lizard's getting too powerful. Or gods dictating decision making. What is their calling card or are they discreet? They have a calling card that is a wooden coin and on the wooden coin is like an Arabic style oil lamp, like the lamp from Aladdin that has a little flame coming out of the spout. Um, they don't leave big calling cards. Those little coins are left usually as like a badge to signal between members that, hey, I'm one of you, you're one of me. Um, but they don't tend to like leave them places at all. They're more like a very discreet uh, bit of flair so they recognize each other. They are a secret society, so their goal is to stay secret. They don't want to be... Why do they want to stay secret? That's a good question. Um... It is easier than being an official organization. You're not wrong, Dennis. It gives them a lot more latitude to make decisions and stuff. Um, yeah, kind of similar to the Illuminati. I think you got the spelling right. Perhaps knowledge is considered the realm of gods, and so arcane actions are seen as intrusions into the gods' realm. I think that's true in other places. I don't think that's necessarily relevant to this, because the majocracy that they came out of definitely didn't hold that view so i think the culture at large wouldn't have at that point either um i like that though and i think i might hang on to it for something later um easier than being an official organization Perhaps that's the schism that exists between the original founder and the current group. Yeah, maybe. Okay, let me think about that. Let me think about that. I'm gonna have to mull it over for a while. A fracture has cool potential plot point for splinter cells and fanatics. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, let's make a note here. Um between original group and ghetto group question mark. Um cool potential for splinters. And fanatics. 
Maybe not all in Mason were eliminated, but they were isolated. Your fingers have horrible spelling. Yes. Okay, so back of book. These two pages don't need to be here anymore. All right, plot hooks. Splinter groups and fanatics who schisms from the Lampai Loka. Okay, and then this was on May 28th, world building. Just in case I need to find my notes again later. All right, my darlings, that is our hour and a half. We have done it. Um... Dennis, I have a subscription to World Anvil. Um, I don't know if that's a service you're familiar with at all. I haven't done a ton of work on the platform itself, but it's something that I keep intending to do. Uh, I think I'd be more motivated to do it if I had people that wanted to work on it there. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm open to doing collaborations on this or helping with another setting for sure. What's your... Um, handle on world anvil and I'll look you up or I can give you mine. I'm pretty sure mine is that should be me. Let me see if I can track it down here. I do not have very much there at all. But that's what I have. Like I said, I've had this for a while and not really plugged anything in there. I should start though, because it would keep me more organized if I would invest the time in doing it. Um, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Add people as an editor and screen share may be easier. Yeah, for sure. For sure, for sure. Um, you're welcome, Patrick. Thank you for coming and hanging out with me. Um, I'm going to stream again tomorrow, but it's got to be a drawing stream. I have to get the work finished for the map. So if you want to come hang out with me while I draw things, we can still talk world building. I just need to get this map on the go. Um, feel free to come hang out with me. We'll be kicking off at the same time, about 9.30 uh, Mountain Talk which is my time. Um, I don't know what that is everywhere else, but you are completely welcome to come. I will post the link on my Monocled Octopus Facebook page, as I usually do. And uh, yeah, that's about what I know for now. So yeah, I think I'm going to wrap it up and go make myself another cup of coffee, because I can do that. And uh, you have a new mapping project. Sweet. If it's super secret, does that mean I don't get to know about it? I want to, um, I have a dungeon map to do for the fantasy maps and worlds group as well. Um, because we're doing, we're just about to our 10,000th member. So we're going to do a mega dungeon. Um, and yeah, have it be good. No shroom for the dog, by the way. What? What did I miss? I'm confused. You have a good one too, Dennis. Thank you so much for coming to hang out today. I hope you had a good time.
And um, I hope you join us again. We do this every week. So it's pretty fun. Uh, Laura, thank you so much for coming and hanging out. And Joe and Stephanie too. Thank you guys. This was a really active stream and was totally awesome. Totally awesome. No shroom for the dog. My post on Facebook. Confused. Oh, <laughs> for Saxon. Yeah, I know. I didn't give him any shrooms. He just had a Goomba face. He does that sometimes. I had to remember what picture you were talking about. It was productive. Thank you. I was really like kind of spinning loose wheels this morning. Not sure what I wanted to work on or anything. I was like, I still need to stream. I miss my people. So yeah, I'm glad we did it. I am very glad we did it. All right. I'm going to put this map away. I'm going to sign off. And I will catch those of you who want to come hang out tomorrow, tomorrow. And otherwise, I hope you guys have a great day. And uh, thanks for hanging out. Catch you later.